studies on just history of Icelandic fishing, saw from the history how we are advancing really fast. We toured a fish factory. We also met with a local business. Realized there's a lot of entrepreneur uh, type ideas that can be sprouted from the fishing industry. One example was Mars Seafood Company, which was started by one woman working above a fish factory and it expanded into an international um, seafood sales company that really prides themselves on Icelandic fish in particular. Also, there's all kinds of cool things starting to happen, like use of fish skin for medical purposes, bandages, cosmetics, sustainability. It was uh, pretty neat to see how the salt in the factory was reused and all parts of the fish are used. We looked into EarthCheck a little bit, how some communities are already participating in the program. We were pretty impressed with the high standard of cleanliness and the high quality standards and definitely contrast between some factories that I've seen back where we live. So for tourism, there's all kinds of ideas already happening, like people are owning boats, taking tourists out to go fishing and have that experience. Zach and I actually got to go fishing, it was pretty fun. That's us fishing, <laughs> stupid shore. Uh, also the sea tourists, like uh, one man that owns a Viking uh, style boat, it takes people out on this and kind of tells them about the landscape in the area. Another idea that we thought was really unique was the fish skin clothing that we're starting to see places and tourists are really attracted to these items. And these uh, Icelandic fish works really good because it is different, it tastes better. And so there are basically some keywords for the future of uh, uh, fishing industry. I think there is diversity, efficiency, transformation, and employment. I think fishing industry is really, really important for Iceland. It's, it's the symbol and the mark of Iceland. And it, and it created tons of employment and money for each town and for the Iceland as a whole. The fishing industry has to challenge the tradition. It also has to create a kind of diversity so that the fish industry has a bright future. Right? You want to do cosmetics, you want to fashion industry, you want to do something. I, I think behind this name is employment, it's money, it's, it's driving people to go back. This is Iceland, this is unique, this is something that no other country has. So yeah, but in the end we had to like think how could fishing uh, be a part of a regional park. We thought that fishing could be like the middle and central of the regional park because it connects to everything. But with fishing, a lot of jobs can come which are uh, medical jobs or uh, scientists coming to explore more things in the sea. So we can do a lot more than we are used to. If, but, and that could attract young people, could encourage them to come back. Important thing we learned from this is that these elements that people want, the more social gathering places, more activities and commodities, increased amount of young people, those things that the young people want will take time to grow, but that the regional park will really help with these things. It will help with the growth among the communities of Snaifelsnes as a whole. I think I'd like to also say, if I may, on behalf of um, all of us from the University of Washington, my students, if I may say this, I think we'd like to express our intense gratitude for this area for inviting all of us to participate in this project, allowing us to actually get involved, um, to be, to actually have a voice with other people. It's a very precious um, an exciting possibility and I think we've all learned a huge amount and the generosity I think among, among everything else I think everybody cares the students are saying when you come back Margaret please tell us what happens from this because I think there was such a generosity such a kindness such a deep connection and I think we feel incredibly privileged to be able to participate so, uh, <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.